welcome to embedded programming and today i want to revisit the last video so if you were made a really good point so what let me tell you what happened so i was trying to use an arduino and an esp8266 um, as two different ways to control the citron um, mds13 motor control board and what i noticed is that I couldn't get to full speed using the ESP8266. Now, the problem was that the user pointed out that, you know what, the ESP8266 might have a 10 bit for the pulse width modulator, which means when I put in a value of 255, that's just a quarter or 25% duty cycle. You can see that it's on for only 24 milliseconds, and then it's off for was essentially 75% of the time. All right, so now we know that how even at max, when you specify 255 or 254, you're never going to be able to get more than 25% duty cycle. So this, the ESP8266 cannot be used for your speed control. The other thing I want to do is use a different set of motors. Before, what I was testing with, I had two different motors and it, you know, it was all sort of weird. First of all, they're different motors. They're really small motors and um, the current and the battery started to hold using a nine volt battery was an issue. They're dying quickly. And I decided to use this much bigger battery. So what I decided to do was to cannibalize my little platform that I had here. If you remember, I had this robot platform, uh, robot car platform with the same similar type of small motor. And I'm like, if that's not gonna work when we were testing it, I don't wanna waste time putting effort into, get this, into getting this to work. So I took, took out the caster wheel that was up front here, and I got some plexiglass and cut it like a square so it's not as fancy as this guy is. Um, nice and rounded and all this other good stuff. And I basically just cut a square, and the only thing I would say after doing this now is maybe I should have gotten a little bit thicker plexiglass, but that's okay if it flexes a little bit. And maybe I should have probably shoot to get these a little bit closer, but all in all, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, each one of these motor with wheels and the brackets and everything is about $19. Now, you can get them out of places for a little bit cheaper. You can get like both for 24 bucks, so basically $12 each. Um, right now, I'm just using two wires for this motor to power it. Um, but there are four other wires here, and two of them is for ground and VCC, and another two is for encoding right there's an encoder built into this motor and is a two-phase encoder and basically all that means really quickly is that we can read the encoder signal once we provide ground and vcc we can read back the two encoder signal phase a and phase b and determine not only the speed but both speed and direction that this motor is turning so that's going to be good if you want to build a robotic project and you know your direction could change or your motor could flip over your butt could turn over and what was previously forward is no longer forward. And so you could just always know which direction your motor is turning. All right, so that's basically um, that. Um, the nice thing, as we know, we covered the features of this board already, is that I can just connect power and test it. Um, so in terms of wiring things up, um, let me show you some um, slides of me wiring this up um, as I went through. Basically, um, what I did was I soldered some wires so that I can connect it to the Citron board. And I use um, two other pieces of wire to connect between the two boards so they, they have common power. And then each board, of course, now is connected to the individual motor. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and connect this battery and start testing this um, without having to use a um, microcontroller. And I don't have electrical tape to, to cover this, so I'm using some paper tape, which is not probably the best thing, but it's better than having these guys hang around and potentially causing some trouble. But the nice thing is that, let me see if I get it here, is that now I can go ahead and start testing this wheel and the motor. And as you can see, the LEDs light up like they're supposed to. Whereas the last time we were testing it, um, we had LEDs lighting up, like both of them lighting up. We didn't know what was going on. And I was using the same battery. 
um but yet we were just seeing some weird things when i was trying to use those other um smaller motors and you could see here um this is also working really well and nice and fast i like it all right so that's sort of like the assembly part of this whole thing okay um now what we want to do is look at connecting it to the arduino because remember we're not going to be using um any esp8266 and from the last video we showed that um what we want to do is have one pin for direction and another pin that's capable of pulse width modulation to control our speed and we selected um for the arduino pin d3 well actually two and three um and four and five and so if we look on the call out for this guy well probably can't see so we want two and three which is over here and four and five which is here and we'll connect one to one motor over here and this is what makes these groove connectors so really cool it's like look how easy is that and then that and that's our that's our connection and so now that we have this connected we can power up this guy okay and because ground is already going from this board through these groove connected to here we don't have to worry about it like this is already grounded ground is connected already no weird thing to do um very very easy i really like it so now let's go check out our code all right so here we are in my code directory but i haven't started my visual studio code yet so i'll just do it ls and so we did part three. This is when we test this board with both um, Arduino and ESP8266. For now, I, I just want to um, focus on part four, which is where we're in. And we're gonna look at Arduino and this Cytron MD5 and what I'm calling this robot platform. So from now on, we'll have a consistent set of motors to test with and um, we have I'll say, another motor um, shield to test, so this guy. This is the Arduino shield that comes with this Arduino that has Wi-Fi. So maybe this is going to redeem that ESP8266 because if I could get the Wi-Fi and this to work, um, that's great. If, if the shield works, that's that's really nice. I, I could use it um, with this these motors and I could leave the Cytron for another project. But if the shield doesn't work, no big deal. I can take off. Um, as you can see, there's a header here for those motors. I could take off this and then just use my uh, groove shield with this board and then still use these Cytron. So I have a number of ways to go. So we'll, we'll test all of that. Um, all right. But for today, um, if I look into my part four directory, it's empty. And so what I want to do is simply copy um, the example that we did in part three, copy those examples to part four, because we're not writing any new code. All right, so let me do Visual Studio code on my part four directory. And so let that come up. And okay, so we can get rid of the ESP8266 because we're not doing that anymore. And then in terms of circuits, anything that says ESP8266, we're getting rid of that because we're not doing that. We know what this first example does. It tries to spin one motor. The second example tries to ramp up and ramp down. Um, the third example change direction. The fourth example switches to controlling the motor using the motor driver as opposed to a direct pin driver. But exercise five is where we sort of brought everything together and control both motors, changing their directions and so on. And so basically what we had for that is that we have the two motors and one is going to every 40 millisecond, one is going to do some change, make some changes. The other one is going to do it twice as fast. Basically what we should expect is that um, over a period of time, both motors should be turned in the same direction, but then in the very next period, they will be in opposite direction, but within each period, they're going to ramp up and ramp down. So if you have trouble tr following all of that, I'll run two or three full periods for you to see um, the whole cycle. All right, so right now we don't really care about the code anymore because we've been through this code many, many times. What we really want to see is 
how well this code works with Arduino and the Citron board. That's what we really want to see, right? Can we have fine grained control of the motor? Does this motor work well? Does the Citron board work well? Do we see those, still see those error bits and all those other things? And the answer is no. And so let me demonstrate that for you. And so I can run this from anywhere. Um, so let me go to part four. Uh, and so if I do exercise five, for example, so I'm going to Arduino and then exercise five, and then I do go run main. And so I already powered up, connected, and you should see when I start uploading in a bit, um, oh, I'm not gonna worry, try it, but you should see it start blinking there when I press enter. Um, yeah, maybe you can see it flashing, but as you can see, both motors start turning in the same direction, ramp up. One of them is gonna get to full speed before the other one starts slowing down before the other one can even complete. So you can remember one is doing faster than the other one, twice as fast. And then it's gonna change direction while the other one is start slowing down. And so by then, the boat should end up stopping at the same time. Um, and then the boat gonna change direction. And again, do the same thing of ramping up. And again, one is gonna do it much faster. So it's gonna complete its entire cycle in the time that, so this guy is going twice as fast. And it should slow down, change direction before this guy finishes the cycle. And so when it starts the next time, by the time they both stop, you should be able to see that though they're both going in the same direction. If you look at the Cytron board, what is happening? The lights are not, error, there are no error lights. Uh, you can see the direction change. Um, all that stuff is happening um, just like it should. Um, the last thing we had like both lights showing, even though it was going in one direction, it was super weird. So don't know what was, don't know what was happening there. So these motors seems to work really, really well. Um, they're actually six volt motors, but I'm using 11 volts um, battery here. But they seem to be fine. They don't feel hot or anything like that. I like the speed of them. Um, I wanted to do a self balancing robot, and I was I had concern about the how fast these motors can spin up in order to counteract um, any tilting. So a self balancing robot is basically like a Segway. And it's really just an inverted pendulum problem that you're solving. Um, but now that I see how fast they can go, I think that oh, I can actually use them for self-balancing. Okay, so this is going to be the platform we're going to use from now on to continue testing. But it's just so, this is working so well that I, since I got this working, I've just been playing with it. and just sitting back here, watching it go back and forth. Um, once I have a way to control this over Wi-Fi, I will definitely try to make it a, a, re a remote something. Um, that's my ultimate goal. Um, probably control it from an application or a joystick or something over Bluetooth, but we'll get there slowly. Oh, before I go, I should probably run another example and show you. Just let me show you example um, one, where we simply just try to spin up the motor and, uh, oh, maybe example two where we spin it up and ramp it up and down, but we don't change any direction. And the reason why is just to show you how well um, we, we can control these motors. So main, and so let's do that. This is just gonna be one of the motors, and we use them direct pin here, but you'll see from the value, you see the motor starts spinning, um, which we saw before. The motor starts spinning very early, and it's getting up to speed, max speed, it's gonna stay there. Then we're gonna start slowing down in a bit. Right? Start slowing down. And there we go. Full stop. There we go. And then we ramp up again. We start rolling actually around 30. So I just wanted to show you that. So very, very good control here. Um, so the Arduino is working really nice. The boards are working out really nice and the battery and the motor everything this is like the perfect setup here but we'll see we still have a few other things to test um maybe they, those will blow us away too well blow me away all right take care see you um bye